This begs the question, what does Thiago Santos do to not just be another statistic for John Jones, another title defense? How does he shock the world? Every contender always says we're going to do that, right? We're going to shock the world. We're going to beat John Jones. We haven't seen that yet. Um, what does Thiago Santos do? Well, I think if this were like a pure uh, like kickboxing fight, there's, there's a very good chance that Santos would take this. But there's so many variables in MMA. And Jones, what he does is that he just uses those variables so well. I mean, he's one of the most versatile fighters ever. The way he switches between different techniques is, I mean, it's impressive. It's really, really impressive. And he goes through these unorthodox strikes. I mean, we all know about his elbows, his spinning elbows and stuff like that. And I mean, he's got power. We saw what it, what he did to, uh, to Daniel Cormier in the rematch. And he can definitely uh, put somebody out. With that said, though, I definitely feel that Santos does have like, more one-punch knockout power. Uh, I think most people would, would agree there. I mean, his nickname, Maheta, means sledgehammer, and it's just, I mean, it could not be more appropriate. So, Jones, he has problems when he can't get into his rhythm. We saw it in the first Gustafsson fight. Uh, Gustafsson really went after him, made him uncomfortable, went for an early takedown, got it, and managed to sort of put pressure uh, on John Jones in a way that many other fighters haven't. Because as soon as Jones starts settling into his rhythm, when he starts finding that pace that he likes to work at, he can just slowly pick his opponents apart. And that is really what uh, Santos has to look out for here. He's got to stop Jones's rhythm. He's got to go after him. He's got to cut angles, ideally put him up against the cage if possible. And, I mean, he is capable of fighting smart fights. We saw that. I mean, he's not just a mindless, you know, knockout machine, just winging punches. Now, if you were to look at the Jimmy Manuel fight, you might, you might think so, because that was kind of a reckless abandonment type of fight. But even in those small exchanges with Manuel, he showed a bit more poise and control. Then again, he did land uh, some early shots on Manuel that I think may have shaken up his, uh, uh, his tactics a bit. But regardless, uh, against Jan Blachowicz, a very good boxer, who we actually saw do very well standing against Alexander Gustafsson. Uh, but there he had a measured approach. He kind of, he wasn't passive, but he just was not as aggressive as I think Blachowicz expected him to be, which kind of frustrated Blachowicz, forced him to sort of overcommit and get a little bit more aggressive than he otherwise would have. And what happened, Santos countered and knocked him out. Now, that is not the tactic that I would recommend for, uh, for Jones. Uh, he should not hold back. He should march forward, but do so lightly. He should be light on his feet. He should be, be wary of all the counterattacks that Jones will throw at him. And uh, I guess kind of combine sort of a tactics between uh, Manu and Blachowicz, where he, has, he should have the aggression that he had versus Manuel, but with the control that he had against Blachowicz. So that it's not reckless shots, but he doesn't leave himself open for counters. Uh, but it's, it's going to be really hard for him to find that distance because, like against Manoa, he did very well uh, uh, sort of in a close boxing range where his, his hooks, they were shorter than Manoa's. Manoa sort of overreached a little bit and kind of more sort of grazed the outside, whereas Santos was able to get the harder power shots. I'm not sure if that's the right distance for him to apply here versus John Jones. Because once he starts getting to that range, he is in range for Jones's deadly elbows. So it's going to be really hard. I think that Santos very much has to change the range that he fights at. Uh, never really settle completely into one range. And uh, I guess keep Jones guessing a little bit. Uh, for me, that will be Santos' key to victory. To do what he wants to do and shock the world. And do what no one has really done convincingly so far, which is beat Jones. Uh, I mean, one could make the argument that Gustafsson won the first fight, and obviously he does, uh, Jones does have a DQ loss to Matt Hamill, but I mean, nobody really sees that as a, a loss. Uh, I mean, come on. <laughs> Anyone who's seen the fight knows that he was dominating the fight, and it was weird refereeing by Steve Mazzagati that ended it that way. So, can Santos shock the world? Can, yes. Will he? Probably not. Uh, I mean, I've just laid out what he needs to do to win, but I feel like Jones is one of those, you know, one of those special fighters where you can have 
the best game plan. You you can you can even be ahead on the scorecards, but he will find a way, like he did in the first Gustafsson fight. I mean, had he not landed that elbow in the fourth, it could have been a very different fight. But he finds a way to do that, and um, I kind of think he's gonna do that here too. I think that. Santos may threaten, uh, he might even rock Jones a little bit, but I just think that Jones will be able to sort of recover and, uh, and slowly but surely start finding his rhythm. Uh, Santos' best chances are in the first two rounds is the way that I see it. Once it starts going into championship rounds, if it goes that far, I'm pretty sure that Jones will, uh, will walk away with the victory. But yeah, if Santos is going to do it, that's how.